Sin. Sin. <laughs> One of my favorite people to watch of all time. There's yep. a few people that no matter oh, who they are, yep. where they are in life, yep. I'm always going to feel better when I see their work. Yes! There are a few people that do that for me, and she is one of them. Uh, I've been a big fan of hers for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Like many people, I discovered her on SNL, but she's done so many different types of things ever since. Uh, Ghostbusters, Reboot, Coming to America, Trainwreck, all these different things. Heather B, she was nominated for a primetime Emmy Award Absolutely. for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series. Man, give it up for the one and only, the lovely, the magnificent one herself. Give it up for Leslie Jones. Yeah. Jones on the show. Back with us. Yo, there's been a few moments on this show that let me know that I'm living my dream. Yes, baby. Okay. Oh, one of so them, sweet. one of them, Leslie, is when um the active president, Barack Obama, mm -hmm. called in on our show. I knew I was living out my dream. Wow. Another that one. That is a good dream, that, come, man. Come on, Leslie. Man, if I meet Michelle, I'm going to pass out. You ain't met Michelle? No, nah, not yet, man. I, I just feel like they're keeping us from each other because <laughs> I feel like as soon as we meet each other, like the sun is just going to become brighter and trees are going to grow. I see that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Butterflies are going to just start flying out everywhere. I think it's going to be a miracle. <laughs> we, Michelle... Michelle Obama and Leslie Jones meet. That's going to happen. Butterflies are going to fly out. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one of the meetings. The other thing, uh, LL Cool J come up here recently uh, in LL freestyle. Is great. And you know what's so, what people don't understand about like real hip hop, because you know, I'm you, old enough. I was here when hip hop started. Okay. Yes, I was there. In you the was beginning there. of her. I was there. I, I was, was there. there. Somebody like Heather B. Killing the mic. Thank I you. will never forget that. Girl, you, you definitely, you know you owe us an album. <laughs> <laughs> and that's real. Oh. Tell me good that's, to work. that's real. That's like real talk. Real like, talk. do you understand what I'm saying? Thank you, sis. Like, because that's when rap was like educational mm -hmm. and, and still sounded good. You know what I'm saying? LL, I just saw LL in the concert. And I'm going to tell you, it's like that man never stopped rapping. He never stopped. One of the best shows I ever seen. Mm -hmm. So. Seriously, that dude is tight. I love it. Uh, Leslie fucking Jones is the name of the memoir that's yeah. out tomorrow. Yeah. For uh, Chris Rock did the forward. Yes. Pre-sale today, baby. Go to Amazon and, and make sure you get that audio, too, because the audio going to be off the chain. Absolutely. Speak to your relationship with Chris Rock. Well, did he play any role with you getting on SNL? Yes, he did. Chris, I've known Chris forever. You know us comedians known each other forever before we actually make it. Mm -hmm. And Chris used to see me all the time. I would chase him to his truck. I literally would chase Chris out of the club. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I would chase him right cause to the valet because he always parked in the front. And I was like, Chris! And I would be like, Chris! Come on, you know I'm funny, dude. You know I'm funny. Why you don't tell these people about me? And he was like, you're not ready. You're not ready yet. But it's so funny. He told me the story. He was like, I never said that you wasn't ready. I said that they wasn't ready for you. And I was like, no, no. I remember what you said, man. I remember what you said. And and he was right. I I I was doing jokes, but I wasn't doing comedy okay like like there is a difference what, what's the difference it like, is a difference okay. i mean there's comics that you love to watch and the reason you love to watch them is because they're doing comedy they're doing their life they're making real problems funny they're making you know and then you have doing comedy the put on pump shut and like oh the white man did this the black man did that those are jokes you know okay. those are just you know but when you're doing comedy where someone can't copy your jokes mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. like like you when you're telling up like i all my stuff on stage is literally shit that's happened to me uh -huh. and i can make it funny and that is what a comic's job is whenever people sitting around saying i can do comedy well can you make your mama laugh? Can you make your mama's mama laugh? Can you make your mama's friends, friends, friends laugh? Because I can't. Can you? Uh -huh. So that that's that's the difference. You know what I'm saying? So um, when my brother passed away is when I actually started doing comedy. Not saying that I didn't love it and that I wasn't funny and that uh -huh. I wasn't doing my thing. But it was a different type of going up on stage and not giving a shit if you laugh. Ooh. I don't give a shit if you laugh. I know this is funny, and I need you to hear this story. It took your brother to pass in a way to get it to that point? It took my brother to pass away because it was more of, uh, how can I put this? It was like, okay, everybody dying. I must be next. Okay. So let me kill this. Wow. Before, so if I die, 
what they going to say about me was, that bitch was funny as yeah. fuck, man. She used to do them, man, she used to do them jokes that was like crazy. So uh -huh. it's... It was yep. a it was a mind thing at yeah. the time trying to get through grief, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. trying to mourn someone that you love that you didn't expect that was gonna die, and um, yeah, I started wearing the mohawk. I think you know that's where the mohawk came yo, from. Yo, let me tell you something. <laughs> if you really look at if you if you really a fan and mm -hmm. you know me before the hawk. Before the hawk, I, which is hilarious, <laughs> I called myself conservative. Like, I would not come on stage without my hair done uh -huh. or without a clean T-shirt. And some. And tender, I, I, I was always presentable. But after my brother died, I gave no fucks, and I dared anybody to say anything about me. Uh -huh. So it was like the mohawk was how my hair would look when I was at home and didn't do it. Okay. So Ian Edwards, I don't know if y'all know Ian Edwards. Of course Edwards. we know Ian Edwards. Ian, yeah. Ian Edwards, I was... <laughs> Literally mourning my brother. I was in the middle of the floor. And, and I remember this because it was very lethal weapon-ish. You remember mm -hmm. when he was telling the story? I was laying on the floor and I was just like, yeah, I'm just not going to move from here. I'm just not going to move. But there was voices that was like, well, how are we going to pay rent? <laughs> you can't <laughs> yeah. pay rent just laying in the middle of the floor. And man, man, you need to go to the bathroom, man. Like, you know, what you going to eat? Like, you're starting to stink. Like, you know, stuff was going, but I was like, I'm not moving. And Ian Edwards hit me on my phone, and he was like, yo, I need a comedian. He did, I don't think he knew my brother passed. He was like, I need a comedian. What's his name? Didn't show up. Come and do this. I'll give you $75. Now, nah, I'm moving for $75. Okay, $75. You're moving I for $75. Get up. Yeah. If, if you're a comedian and you need, you're moving for $75. Yeah. So I got up and I put on my clothes. I went and looked in the mirror and I was like, I'm not doing shit to my hair. And it was a straight, it was beautiful because I had just got it done. The sides are smooth. The hawk was just hawking. The hawk was hawking. So <laughs> I, got out the, I got out the car and Ian was like, yo, is that how you wearing your hair now? And I thought he was going to start snapping on me. He was like, you look like a fuck. A superstar and I was like oh well this took nothing to do yeah this is how I'm going to be wearing my hair from now on because I didn't want to do anything I uh -huh. didn't want to mm. have to do shit you when you get a death that's close to you yeah everything I, I'm telling you you don't be affected until someone close to you dies mm -hmm. and you go fuck man they're not going to be here anymore that shit is painful mm -hmm. as up mm -hmm. and then to have to go up and make people laugh it was a different type of feeling now yeah the passion now that i felt for comedy that it wasn't just about making people laugh this is about bringing myself some joy mm -hmm. and healing mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so it and it turned into a vulnerable and it i turned vulnerable on stage i was just just doing jokes that oh that and then chris saw me one late night, I was at the comedy store wow. and I was doing this slave joke. Uh -huh. The one I got in trouble about, which pisses me off because it's a genius joke. Can you do it again? Well, I, it's it, what it was based around. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do that joke? No, right I, that everybody. I, I, have, I have no problem with doing it because it's a great, it's a great fucking joke. And, and where it originated from was years ago. Back, mm -hmm. I wrote this joke 15 years before I started doing it. I had came off a bad date. Uh -huh. I came off a really bad date, which was a line of bad dates that I had. And I was sitting in the middle of the floor. And I remember I was eating cold Chinese food. And I was like, God damn it. You know, back in the slave days, I would never be single. I would be the number one slave draft pick. I was like, <laughs> look at me. I'm six feet tall. Look at my teeth. Look at my hair. Look how strong I am. They will be putting me with the best men on plantation, I would have all the best men. I would have Denzel. I would have. I would have uh, just all the, the just the gorgeous men. And every nine months, I would be giving them Shaq, Kobe, Kimbo Slice. You know what I'm saying? Like I would be the, the number Kimbo one. Slice. So it's, it's, it's a. It was yeah. a real, but it's a real joke. And if you're really, really good, which I yeah. am. You can you can you can do this joke and execute it. And I was doing that joke on stage, and uh, Owen Smith said Chris Rock was standing there watching me do the joke. He pulled out his phone and typed something in, and uh, Owen went and asked him. He's like, "What you doing?" He was like, "I'm putting her on the funny person list." And wow. maybe three days later, he hit me, and he goes, "Yo, I just had dinner with Lauren Michaels. Uh, somebody's gonna be calling you from SNL, so you can go for an audition." And I lost it. I said, "Are you?" fucking serious I said, what the fuck is wrong with you this is how you help me this is how you help me you get me a sketch show motherfucker i'm a stand-up 
What's so, wrong with you? You was tripping? Oh, I went <laughs> off on him. And he was like, what? What are you talking about? I was like, what the fuck am I going to do, Chris? I don't have no damn characters. I don't have no characters. The fuck I'm going to do? He was like, shut up. That's what you're going to do. And you're going to go do comedy. I'm not talking to you no more. Click. <laughs> And I just went out and auditioned for SNL. And the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we are. I love it. I love it. You know, Leslie, you got such a great story. You actually played basketball, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you went yeah. to college. And just to let y'all know, a lot of people going to be mad that I repeated that slave joke. And I'm just going to let you know, black folks. Man, come on. What was the pushback? The pushback was, oh, Leslie... Oh, man, I don't know what joke these people heard. Oh, you call black women niggas. Oh, you, you, it's something about red. Oh, I was like, are y'all not even looking at the artistry of what this joke yeah. is, is like mm. saying? So, yeah, just want to let you know, just in okay. case you get your blowback. She got a new member. It's called Leslie <laughs> fucking Jones. In case you, in case you, in, in, in case, case you know, please, <laughs> Leslie fucking Jones. Jones. What? Tell me about this moment you wanted to shoot Whoopi Goldberg. What is that? Oh, my God. You speak about it's it in the book. It's one of the best sketches me and Keenan came up with. So we and Keenan were going to the office. I was always smoking. I was always smoking weed. So we were sitting you there. You say was? Past tense. Okay, keep going. Damn. I smoke. <laughs> Bro. Keep going. We was, okay, okay, I okay. was. Anyway. <laughs> Sway. <laughs> Sway your ass. <laughs> Don't start nothing. Okay. Won't be nothing. Okay, okay. You know I'm old enough to say that. Okay. Please don't find that fat meat is greasy. Okay. okay. All right. All right. <laughs> so, so me and Kenny were sitting in the office, and we were trying to write. We were just having fun. And I said, you know, I'm always playing Whoopi. Wouldn't it be funny? If we brought Whoopi in, because everybody thinks I look so much like Whoopi, and but it's the real Whoopi, and we put her at update desk, but Colin thinks it's me playing a trick on him. Mm -hmm. So I was gonna sit at the uh, I was gonna sit at the desk, and I think be Whoopi, and then we was gonna switch me out, and then real Whoopi was gonna come in, and everybody's going crazy, and then Colin's gonna be like. Okay, Leslie, like you really did good this time, but we know it's you, and I'm, and then Whoopi's gonna be like, no, Colin, no, it's really me. You know, Leslie switched me out. We wanted to do this for fun. This, was, and and he goes, no, Leslie, I know it's you. And then she goes, no, I'm really Whoopi Goldberg. So he pulls out a gun and goes, oh yeah, if you're Whoopi Goldberg, then plow, like like you know, if you you, you know, <laughs> you like could take, and so he shoots him, and then we go. Oh, now you shoot Whoopi Goldberg. And, and then it's like, you know how you cut the, like, and it goes boop, then it comes back on, all you can hear is people running around. Oh, my God, why would you shoot Whoopi Goldberg, Colin? Boop. <laughs> you know, it was just, a, now we, now at the time, me and Keenan are crying. Right. We're crying. We think this is the funniest thing we've ever wrote. We go to one writer, Brian Tucker, and we're telling Tucker, and we, man, dying. We're on the wall. We're like, oh, they're going to love this. And Tucker's sitting there the whole time and he goes, so you want to kill Whoopi Goldberg on TV? And we're like, she's not really dead, dude. We're just shooting her. He was like, so you want to shoot Whoopi Goldberg on live TV? Wait, why are you putting it like that? It's it's a joke. He was like, get out my office. So he was like, <laughs> he was like all right, all right. You don't like it? The update team's going to love it. The update, going. we went to update and we're telling this story and they're just sitting there and they're like, we're not going to kill Whoopi Goldberg online. <laughs> We're not trying to kill Whoopi. We're just going to shoot her. And it was like, they're, they're not going to shoot. So I was like, I'm taking this to Lauren. Took it to Lauren. And Lauren was like, we're not going to shoot Whoopi Goldberg on <laughs> And I was like, Lauren, Lauren, we're not going to really shoot Whoopi Goldberg. No, we, we're not going to do that, Leslie. Oh, it's just. <laughs> Yo. Oh, and I told Whoopi Goldberg this guy, she thought it was hilarious. Whoopi was with it. Wow. She was with it. Wow. We could have made history by shooting, made shooting Whoopi Goldberg on TV. We could have made would have been a New York bestseller in one day. Best what? Thank you. <laughs> one day. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie Jones is here, man. And you got so many stories. Man, man, so many, right? So many. You got to do the movie, the adaptation or you the doc. You think they want to make a movie out of uh, that? Uh, something. Who going to play Leslie Jones, though? Whoopi. <laughs> that was good. I like that one. I like that. Other. That I was like good. That. I like that. <laughs> I can see it though. I can that see it. That would be cool, right? 
Um, how far did basketball go for you? Just to- uh, no, I played from the sixth grade until my sophomore year in college. But that's wow. when I I realized that I wanted to do comedy. I I was playing. I was playing, and then got uh, drafted to a, a Division One school, mm-hmm. and they didn't tell me what red shirt really was. Mm-hmm. And red shirt is that you still do all the practices and everything, but you don't get to play in the game. And somebody should have told me. Because <laughs> I'm not finna do all this fucking plaque today. And I don't get to I don't get to get in the game. Oh, I became a de- oh, I became a degenerate. Oh, I never went to class. I was drinking. It was I was just having fun. Because my coach knew I was lonely. He made the mistake of taking me to the black student union. Oh, you went it to It was the- over <laughs> after that. I became a Kappa sweetheart. No way. Oh, I became a ha- I'm a <laughs> Yo, Kappa. Sweet. Yo sweet, yo sweet, yo sweet, yo sweet. I'm and a kappa. I, oh, I can't. I became a kappa so I can have sex with kappas. What a sweet. There you go. <laughs> yeah, baby. The sweet. kappas was so fine, but the only thing about the kappas was that they were all short. Wow. Damn. I never met a tall kappa. Wow. Let's never. See. I'm sorry. Well, what do you got, Mike? Mules I'm right there. Right stand right next to me. How tall is you? How tall is you though? Stand next to me. You ain't tall as me. I'm a tall five seven and a half. Five, a, a tall five seven and a half, <laughs> Leslie. Nigga, don't tell <laughs> nobody that ever again. <laughs> Leslie, please say feet. five eight. Please say five eight. Please say don't ever say five seven. But a tall oh five God. seven. A no, tall, there is no a, such thing as a tall five seven. It a, is unless you're looking at a tall gnome. <laughs> But I I did. I became a Kappa sweetheart so I could go to all the step shows. So you could step yeah. too? You step? Oh, all that shit. Do y'all man. know yeah. the same steps because Probably y'all not. both Kappas? No, the, no, the, 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 sweet, no, no, the there Kappa no sweetheart. Step. Man, the Kappa sweetheart was for the Kappas to fuck on. We had no real. We had no real status. We didn't have no real status. We didn't have no real status. Have you ever seen um um uh what's what's school days? That yes. shit is accurate as fuck. I gotta go accurate as fuck. Leslie, I gotta go on record. Thanks for breaking Kappa, that down, Leslie. No, no, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. We have auxiliary organizations. One of our auxiliary organizations are the fine women uh, who we do call Kappa Sweethearts and Kappa Diamonds, okay. and they are very supportive. Uh, uh, of the brothers on the yard. Yes, they is. It, it's, it's a very good relationship. <laughs> we support all y'all. And Leslie, you guys have done support, great community service. Support, support, support. <laughs> and support. And bend it over. And support. And support. And support. And support. And go. And go. And go. And go. And go. And support. And support. And support. And support. And support. Yeah, I supported a lot of them. We are fine gentlemen of scholars. Okay. And you know what? When I was out, the cappers, like MC Hammer, loved. I cappers. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I cappers could really dance. So he yeah. used a lot of them for his dancing oh, and wow. stuff. So, yeah. Shout out, shout out to Hammer, yeah. man. For real. The pillar in the game. Yeah. Salute to MC Hammer. DB, you got a question? <laughs> yeah, let, <laughs> let's be really quick. I used to do comedy, but I stopped because yes. I didn't okay. have uh-huh. the love and, and the not give a fuck right. yet exactly. that you mentioned earlier. What's your name? Devin. Devin, like D- Devin the dude? Yeah. Oh, I fucking love that name. So, <laughs> well, did you quit because you wasn't funny? Or was it? No, it just it, it was. I was doing jokes. Okay. And I wasn't really sure how to shape my own material, whether it be okay. self-deprecating or whatever the case may All be. Right. But th- right. that not give a fuck right. is very freeing. Right. So I kind of understood that after I had already like. I mean, I'm not saying I'll never go back to it. Right. But now that I know the not give a fuck is so uh, crucial to you mm-hmm. going on stage and having the confidence, I just wondered if you could expand on that because some people will say. A comedian not giving a fuck could be taken as, um, you know, you, you don't care about being disrespectful. You're going to say whatever. Mm-hmm. People are too sensitive. But mm-hmm. some people might also say a comedian is, uh, is insensitive if they mm-hmm. say they don't give a fuck. Can you break that that down in terms okay. of... Well, first of all, I would never say a comic doesn't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's that's not what they got. Right, right, The right. not give a fuck. It's... Um, you have to have passion for what you say in anything that you do. So it's not about because we do give a fuck. Right. Like we, I, I know I give a fuck when mm-hmm. I get on stage. The the what you're looking at is fearlessness, is which is different than not give a fuck. See, not give a fuck is not give a fuck. You don't care if you hurt people's feelings. You don't care if you insult someone. You don't care if you go up and make people laugh. Now, fearlessness is going and doing it even when you're scared, but still doing it in the skill that you respect. 
Even if you don't, even if the people are not laughing at you and you know in your head that this shit is right, the fearlessness is what you need to have. Not 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 giving a fuck. Any comedian that tell you that they don't give a fuck, send me their name so I can go correct them because they give a fuck. Like I used to get mad at D-Ray when he would be like, oh, I'm coming off the top of my head. No, you don't do that. Because mm -hmm. comedians don't need to be coming off the top of your head. Listen, I tell all comedians, look, you can be funny. I was funny as fuck when I started, but that did not stop me from rehearsing. Yeah. That did not stop me from writing jokes continuously. Mm -hmm. That did not stop me from being in the mirror. So so when you're saying that you're doing uh, stuff that, it, like, were you just like, yeah, this joke, this joke, or was you ever talking about yourself? It was... Usually, I'd say ninety percent of the time it was about like my own material things that happened to me, stories mm -hmm. or whatever that were personal, and then I would try to maybe implement jokey things around it, which is mm -hmm. not the approach I wanted to go, but it was something that I was like, well, I, I know how to do it this way. Yeah, because it's almost like not trusting what the actual punchline is. Right. So, so mm -hmm. it's I always say when I'm writing, if I make myself laugh, it's funny, you know. And two, that fearlessness would have let you do your jokes how you originally wrote them you would need to do the jokey joke at the end. That shit's just funny. Mm. You know, I come up with a lot of stuff that I go, okay, do I need to make this funny? And just honestly, I say it like I first think about it when I get on stage and then see how it comes out. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time you'll say it and that shit will be funny as hell and mm. you never knew it was going to be like that. And if it's not funny as hell, you got another time to go on stage. People take bombing so seriously. <laughs> you take it so seriously, yeah, man. Yeah. Yo, think about think about this. What if Mike Tyson, if he got hit in the face, every time he got hit in the face, he quit. He would never be Mike Tyson. You got to fall on the stage. You got to bomb. You got to bomb. Yeah. You got to. You got to know what that shit feels like. So, so you care. So you care when you go on stage. You should care because you got people in the audience that's paid a two drink minimum. They buying food, and you know what? They feel like shit. They feel like shit. They need that escape. And it's your job to make them laugh. Not make them think, not make them sit up and do fucking arithmetic problems. <laughs> oh, well, we got to solve the budget now. No, we don't. We Let's laugh. Let's so, laugh. You know, let's laugh with Leslie fucking Leslie. Jones. That's the name of the book. Hey. The memoir is called Leslie fucking Jones. Hey, 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 it's out tomorrow. That's right. Pre -order, get your pre-order. Pre-order right now. Pre-order right now. Amazon, get it to you right, right the next day. And, and uh, the audio, make sure you go to audio. Audio ain't you, shit like the book. You, did you read the audio? Man, it ain't shit like the book either. <laughs> I started reading it, and then I was like, yo, I know this story, and just threw the book out. I think it might be three sentences from that whole book I love that's it. on the audio. I love so it. you got to get the book and the, the audio. The audio's two yeah. separate projects. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Hey, Leslie, I'm so happy we had you oh today. Oh, I know. Yeah, this is why I wish you. I didn't have to go. So, no, I know. I love come back, you. but come back anytime. Oh my God, you know I love come you. Come on. Love you come back anytime. You ain't gotta be Your promoting. Yeah. I got a sweetheart. Okay. <laughs> Leslie Jones, man. Y'all follow her at oh Last Dog with a lot of G's. <laughs> yeah. Get the book. And on that note, citizens, oh. we have nothing <laughs> left to say. <laughs>